Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast, a podcast bringing you structured Q&As, deep dives on a single topic, and inside looks at our team. In today's episode, we'll be going over how to hit your macros consistently with little to no stress. As a company, the large majority of our clients track macros or have some sort of food goal to hit. The coaches on staff have a long history of tracking macros and are filled with tips, tricks, and the hard truth to get you to where you need to be. Maybe you've started tracking macros or done so for a longer time and still have issues with hitting them. Your day starts off on a good note, and then by the time you're winding down, you realize it's another day of not hitting your macros. Maybe you've stumbled across macros or flexible dieting, and you've never seen anything like it. In the past, you were restricted, and it worked for a little bit until it didn't. But it might also feel like macros aren't working or too hard to hit. So if you're looking for the answer, the hack, the shortcut... Well, we're about to get into it. So you probably recognize my voice as you hear it every week, but I also have Coach McKenzie here with me. Hey, everyone. I'm back. (laughs) And if you want to learn more about her, you can check out her Coach Spotlight episode um, that we've recorded previously. Yep. So we're really excited about this. This is something Sue and I get asked often. um, And for us to be able to talk about it together, I'm looking forward to the dialogue and hopefully helping you guys hit your macros with ease and uh, showing you that it isn't as hard as people make it out to be. Yes. And it's something like Mackenzie said, we get asked this a lot. And I think it's because we uh, project that it's simple, and honestly, it is for us. And that's not something to say that we haven't had our trials and tribulations <laughs> along the way. We definitely, definitely have. But we figured out how to work through it, how to set ourselves up for success, and how to set ourselves up mentally to be able to do it. Um, I know that for some people, macros aren't the answer. So we are by no means saying that you always have to track, or if you don't track macros, you're not going to see success. Um, It's something that both of us, and we've been asked this a lot of how we do it all the time and it not be a a worry of ours. And it's because we, it really doesn't matter for us. It's what works for us. And that's what something I say often to a lot of my clients is that fitness is different for everybody and it looks different for everybody. So just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And that's the best thing about macros is that they look so different for everyone. But there are little things that you can do to really set yourself up for success. And so hitting on those today that hopefully that you can make them your own and that they are able to help you in your own journey. Couldn't have said it better myself. So, um, well, when did you start tracking macros, Mackenzie? Oh, man. So I actually had to go look at my fitness pal. Um, I have been a member since 2014, I believe November 2014, which it would have been my freshman year of college. Um, so I vividly remember the first time and, and kind of when I was looking back at my history, I was like, what was I doing? Um, it was very hit or miss. And so, yeah, I would say Roughly started tracking in 2014 and then got more serious, uh, I would say, at the end of my college career, so which would have been 2018. And as she said that, I was trying to see (laughs) where you can go in MyFitnessPal to see when you joined because I know I've seen it before on MyFitnessPal, but now I do not remember exactly where it is. Um, But I started tracking calories in 20. 15, um, 20, I would say like in high school, I still like tried to figure out food and I never did. Um, I just like basically did the average American where I was like, let me just not eat and try to see how little I can eat. Um, definitely did that in high school. Mine was chicken and peppers for every meal. (laughs) That's one way to go about it. Not the right way, but one way to go about it. Um, and I, then when I got into college, I started to track calories Um, And then I got into macros my sophomore year of college. So it was 2016. Yeah. 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 2016. Um, And I've been tracking macros ever since. I actually have like a old, old video on YouTube on like IIFYM. And it's like a full day of eating. And I'm going about it with just eating like junk food the whole entire time, which goes to show you like we've been doing this. So it's 2021 right now, since 2016, 2017. That gives us a good four, five, six years that we've been tracking macros. So if you are brand new to macros, and we're talking about things like it's just easy peasy, 
Think about anything that you've dedicated four to six years to and how that is something that's probably coming a little bit easier to you. So try not to compare like, oh, they're talking about it that they just do this and it's so easy for them when it's something that at the beginning it definitely wasn't and we made our fair share of mistakes. So I'll kind of, I kind of already addressed some of my mistakes. I did IAFYM um, where I just was like, oh my gosh, I can eat ice cream and cereal and whatever else I want. It's funny that I look back on like my first bodybuilding prep, our first competition prep, and I had no concept of peri-workout nutrition, no concept of meal sourcing and like truly listening to what foods like felt good or settled well. I had no idea how to do any of that. I was just hitting my macros and doing that. And that was strictly what I was doing. Um, So that was definitely one of the mistakes I made to start out with, as well as constantly trying to fit diet foods in, because I felt that it was just something that as much as I could fit, or as crazy as I could fit was going to be like the best bet. And I also it was really cool online at that time. Um, On Instagram, it was like super cool to like be able to fit things into your macros. And like, protein pancakes like the like I don't even the know the one carb waffle the, yeah the one carb waffles and just things that when I look now my stomach's like whoa girl <laughs> don't do that to me again um and even that even though like I feel like I've I'm still so young and and I guess tracking uh because my last prep to this prep to even how I do things now is literally light years different and my last prep was in 2019 so that's a two years ago Mm -hmm. um and I look at my food sources and I look at what I used to try to do and I was just like your life would have been so much easier (laughs) if you just kept it simple (laughs) yes so that is definitely a a phrase we go by is kiss keep it simple stupid um now not calling you stupid but uh, (laughs) I am saying that you should keep it simple so uh, like we said we we've made our fair share of mistakes and you might be listening and be like well you're talking about all these things for peri-workout nutrition or how you look at things so differently now so we're going to get into that we're definitely not just going to gloss over that um so with talking about that Mackenzie why don't you talk about um how you would say like your last prep to this prep is different in the way that you picked your food and your knowledge about food. Yeah. So um, one thing that I really look back on is just my food choices. And I would look at things and not that things like that are processed are bad. It's just when you are in a prep and your food is low, you are thinking like I need micronutrients as well as hitting my macros. So for me, it was a lot of different food sources. So I'm I switch, I would say I'm mainly 90 to 95% whole foods now instead of processed food. Um, I do a lot more cooking than what I used to, but I also have a very different um, living situation in terms of my job and stuff. So it allowed me to do that. But I also was able to get in touch with my digestion of just like, this is how I'm supposed to feel internally. And I am somebody who... I do not like to sacrifice that. And that even goes for now in my off season of just like, I don't want to feel like heavy or like crap half the time. I would rather feel good and feel energized. And that was the biggest shift for me when I went into prep was I knew, you know, food is going to be low in prep. I'm going to be low energy. So let me make the most of it with my food choices. And that was the biggest game changer for me. Yeah. And when we talk about digestion, I know I've received the question, I'm sure Mackenzie has as well, of how do you know if something sits well with you or how do you know if it digests well? And um, some of you might hear that question and be like, well, that's common sense. And some of you might be like, yeah, how do you know if something digests well? Um, And I will say from my personal past, I've always had digestion issues growing up. And so I never felt in tune with my body. I never understood like what that meant to just eat foods that made you feel good. I was just like, these are the foods I grew up eating. I'm going to continue eating them. I feel comfortable with them. Like I wasn't very adventurous with food, I would say growing up, I just ate the food that was in front of me. And that's how things were. Um, And so it's something that how you figure that out is to start keeping a food journal. So you have your food blog and my fitness pal or whatever app that you're using to track, but being able to open the notes pad on your phone, that's the easiest thing that I have found just because we as humans always have our phones on us. Um, So opening up that notes app, 
and being able to make notes of what your meal was, how you felt as you ate it, um, and then how you feel like 30 minutes after you ate it. If you feel like there's gurgling in your stomach, if there's a lot of gas, if it just hurts, if there's pain, anything like that, taking note of it and then reflecting back on that food of like, okay, was it my food sourcing um, as far as what exact food I ate or was it something else in regards to, did I drink too much water while I was um, eating that? Did I eat it way too fast? Um, did I not chew my food at all? Because there's times where I can eat food that sits very well to my stomach and I know it for a fact. And then there's situations where I'm stressed and eating really fast and throwing it down and I'll have a really bad stomach ache. So realize that it's not just the food itself that you want to focus on, but the environment in which you're eating it. So I'll link in the show notes um, a video where I go over some things to keep in mind when it comes to digestion outside of just your food sourcing. But for the food sourcing, truly taking notes on how things are settling with you, how you feel after meals, if you feel tired, if you feel lethargic, if you feel sluggish, um, if you feel like you need to go lay down for a nap every time after you eat, take notice of those things. Now, a few different things you can do is, like I said, look back on it, kind of change around some of your meals of, okay, if it's not the environment and it is the food source, I've kind of already nailed that down, taking that food source out for a few days, being able to see how you feel and then deciding if you want to add it back in and see if that was truly the thing. So you can do an elimination diet of sorts, or if you're having a lot of issues with digestion, you can always go to a low FODMAP or Mediterranean diet um, and be able to have things as simple as possible and then to start adding in different aspects. And one sidestep that I'll make here is if you are having a hard time and you can't nail down what food it is, you can't nail down if it's an environment, it could be a seasoning or a sauce. And I know a lot of people don't think about that. So I did just want to throw it out there um, as far as how to navigate through that. So let's say that you have digestion basically figured out. Mm -hmm. Let's say that you understand how to track your macros because this is not a podcast. I'm telling you how to track your macros or explaining macros themselves. It's how to make sure you can hit them consistently. So let's say uh, we're at the uh, base level of you know what macros are, you understand how to track them, you're not having problems with digestion, where do we go from here? So <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, and it might seem very aggressive, and you might feel targeted by it, but that means that you know the answer to the question as well. And has there ever been a time that you have pre-planned your macros or put in some sort of effort into your day beforehand that you have not hit your macros? I literally, I kid you guys not, I was looking at the show notes that Sue sent me before this, and I was like, is this a trick question? Because <laughs> truly, no. Unless I forgot to eat, which rarely happens. Um, no, and, and that's the biggest thing that I hit home, especially with people that are brand new to tracking or even people that have a busy lifestyle or, or people like Sue and I, like we've been tracking for several years, and I will, every time I get a macro adjustment from Alex, I will say, okay, I'm sitting on the couch the night before my day. I know I these are my macros tomorrow. Let me just go ahead and plug and see what I can do. I have the base of my, my eating done and I'm good to go for the next morning. The worst thing in the world is when I get up in the morning, I have zero clue what I'm going to eat. I have zero clue what my day looks like. And then I'm standing in the kitchen wasting 15 to 20 minutes literally just standing there trying to figure out what I'm going to eat when last night I was sitting on the couch watching a show for an hour and I could have been doing my macros or laying in bed when I was scrolling on Instagram, which highly don't recommend. <laughs> but if you do it, <laughs> you can also plan out your food the next day. <laughs> so, And that is a perfect point because I know that you might be listening and be like, well, I don't have time to plan everything out and get everything situated. I can guarantee that there are at least 10 minutes in a day. And even if it's the 10 minutes that you're sitting on the toilet, I'm not even joking here. There's 10 minutes in the day that you are playing around on your phone that you could just spend that little bit of effort to plan for your goals. Because I know 
that as a client myself and as a person who wants to see change in their physique and as a coach, so I know both sides of the coin, I've been through it all, um, I know that it sucks when you don't hit your goals. Mm -hmm. I know it sucks when you get to the end of the day and you feel let down by yourself. And I know it sucks when you're like, I feel like I can't see progress for it at all. And then you have to realize that you were the issue. That's hard to come to that conclusion. It's yeah. very easy to point the finger of, well, oh, my coach didn't lower my food or I'm not seeing progress because of X, Y, and Z. But I'm asking these questions truly because I didn't have someone to ask it of me in the beginning. And it was so helpful once the question was asked of like, are you truly doing, are you matching your expectations with the effort that you're putting forth? If you're expecting yourself to see all these crazy results and you're not putting forth that effort, then those aren't matched at all, those expectations and effort. And it's something that I have to have that conversation with clients all the time as far as how you go about something and the effort that you put forth directly affects what results you're going to get. And you can't expect, and a funny side story, I was talking the other day to Alex about my retainers. Mm -hmm. um, I have to wear retainers every night. I have a mouth that is very prone to relapse. Um, so my teeth move. And I was sick last week didn't wear my retainers for two nights. So I had worn them every single freaking night. I didn't wear them for two nights. We're sitting at the table across from each other. And Alex looks at me and he's like, did you wear your retainers last night? And I was like, no. Like I was sick. I was like coughing. I like didn't want to deal with like something getting stuck in my retainer. And he's like, I can tell your tooth <laughs> always starts to move and X, Y, and Z. And I was like, Oh, it's so frustrating. I have to wear my retainer every night for my teeth to stay perfect. And he was like, you know, you are saying the same thing that you get annoyed when clients are asking, like, how can I go on vacation, not track, not stay consistent and still have the body that I want. Right. And I was like, listen, I don't need to feel targeted right now. I just don't want to wear a retainer every single night. Um, because I mean, I did not have the expectation growing up that you had to wear a retainer every night. And that was, I mean, I should have set better expectations. Right. But it's like washing your face or brushing yes. your teeth. It's like, oh man, I want clear skin. I don't want stinky breath. So got to do it. Yes. Um, so within that, um, and talking about what that looks like within your day and planning that out. Um, if you are to just wing it and just go about your day, like Mackenzie talked about, first, you will end up standing in your kitchen of what do I want to eat today and wasting even more time. But it's also something that if you are not an experienced tracker, you cannot do this. Yeah. And that is not me trying to stand on some moral high ground and try to act like you just have to, you have to earn it to be able to do it. But it's really telling you that from that perspective, when I first started out, I didn't have the ability to do that and hit no. my macros. Or the knowledge or the experience. It's just like, once you get into it, you start to know the nutritional value of food at that point. So you're like, okay, I know I can hit this because it has X, Y, and Z in it. Um, and that's one thing, even now, I will say that in the depths of prep, I don't have the brain power to do certain things. And that is one thing that I won't spend the time on. I will always plan. And it just, it's part of something that's going to make me successful. So why not take that extra five minutes just to be like, okay, I need to do it. I wouldn't let my car run out of gas on the side of the street because I didn't feel like going to get gas. Like, no, you have to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's something that to be able to have flexibility to maybe go through the track day and track as you go, you have to have consistency first. Um, so flexibility in regards to like becoming more limber definitely requires consistency. You can't just go down and be like, I'm going to hit the splits today and go ahead and hit it. You're going to have to take time to stretch and to practice and you're going to be able to get into it. So it's the same thing within consistency and flexibility is that um, let's say that you start a job and you are navigating through, let's say you're a nurse and you're learning how to put in an IV. They're not going to ask you to go freaking stand in the OR and do the most advanced surgery in the whole entire hospital. They're going to tell you, hey, why don't you get good at learning how to put in an IV? Then we'll kind of see what we can have past that. Um, and I know that might seem like a, a weird example or weird parallel to draw, but it's the same thing that I think that a lot of people 
don't put into the right context. Um, they think like, oh, tracking macros, I can just be flexible. I can yeah. just do whatever I want. But it, it does take time to truly learn, like Mackenzie was saying, what foods have what food, uh, what macros in them, um, which ones are going to be best suited if you are needing lower fat, but you still need to hit a higher protein goal. And navigating through that, that took years of knowledge and understanding food and tracking food and weighing food to be able to do that without any stress now. But I 100% can tell you, I could not do that when I first tra- started tracking macros. Yeah. And uh, trust me, I tried and I failed <laughs> yeah. very badly. <laughs> me too. And that always ends up to honestly, like when you're standing there and you get frustrated, you're just like, oh, well, I'm. that's when you start to just go off the deep end nine times out of 10, because then you're just like at that point, probably very hungry if you've waited. And, and you have a pantry and refrigerator full of whatever. And if you have kids, you got you have kids snacks. If you nanny, everyone knows kids snacks are the hardest things to stay away from. And I say <laughs> kids snacks, but they're not. They're adult snacks they're for adult real. Snacks. We um, eat them. Come and, on. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's when you get in trouble. And I, I won't say in trouble because you're the only person that you have to report to. But it's when that's when you let yourself down and you're just like, dang, I should have just planned ahead. Like, why didn't I do that? Exactly. So we really, really encourage you to master the basics first and to get into tracking. So these are the steps that we recommend to clients. We followed ourselves to get into this position to be able to do exactly like I talked about and exactly as this title says, hit your macros consistently, taking the guesswork out of hitting your macros and hit them with ease. This is something that uh, might seem like a big claim for me to say like, Macros are going to be easy for you, but I can promise you if you do this, that they will be easy for you. You just need to put the time in doing these steps. Um, So the step one would be able to plan out a full day of food um, with easy to track and simple meals to hit your macros. So it's something that if you are new to macros, doing something more advanced like a, a recipe with a ton of ingredients, or let's say you're making like I don't know what's another good example of like something with, I mean, just a lot of ingredients in general. Yeah. Like lasagna, like if you're making lasagna or pasta, like a chicken Alfredo, but it's like macro friendly, I would honestly stray away from trying to do recipes in my fitness pal for a little bit just Mm -hmm. because it's very, very hard. I get confused sometimes. I don't like to do them because they just take too much time for me. So I would prefer to just have a single meal. And I know that's not always the the best case scenario for people, especially if you're cooking in bulk or for multiple people. But I will say that when you are cooking for multiple people, just set some stuff aside for you and continue to make the meal for everyone. If that makes sense. For for the beginning. Yeah, Not that it beginning. always has to be that way. And I talk through this with clients about how they can set up things so they can still enjoy meals with their family. But again, if you're learning through this, realize it's going to take time to learn it and to figure it out. So being able to plan out a full day, like just pick up your phone right now, maybe if you're not driving, of course, <laughs> um, pick up your phone, um, have your macros laid out in front of you um, or written down and track a full day of food um, and be able to do it with simple ingredients or one ingredient thing. So let's say, for example, and and not that you have to only eat chicken and rice, but let's say you do something like rice, turkey, spinach, olive oil. That's your meal. Something very simple, very few ingredients. It's not going to be confusing. It's going to be very easy to weigh out, very easy to put into my fitness pal without wondering if you're tracking the right thing or trying to navigate through that. So just plan out a full day. With that, one tip would be that, um, and we'll go into a few extra tips at the end, um, is to evenly distribute your macros starting out. Instead of trying to just, again, willy-nilly eat things uh, across the day, take your macros, divide them by your average number of meals, and try to hit that goal per meal um, instead of trying to hit the big daily goal. So let's say for easy math, so I don't screw something up, (laughs) you have 100 grams of protein and you normally eat four meals, aim for 25 grams of protein a meal. Let's say you have 200 grams of carbs and you normally eat four meals, then you would have 50 grams of carbs. (laughs) 
Yeah. I second guessed myself when I said I was going to do easy math. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Um, so let's say you have 40 grams of fat. You have four meals a day. Aim for 10 grams of fat in each meal. Now, again, you do not always have to evenly distribute it at all, but this is a great thing to do to begin with. So you're not overwhelmed about trying to put together this huge Tetris puzzle of what your macros are. It's something where it's like, I'm just trying to hit 50 grams of carbs, 25 grams of protein, 10 grams of fat in this meal, and that's all I need to focus on. And that'll give you some structure there. So the next step after that. Yeah, it, well, with that, I will say that people ask all the time, how many, like, what's the right m amount of meals to eat? Mm -hmm. And there is none. Um, so it's going to be what works for you and what works the best for you at that point. And for Sue and I, I know it's usually either four or five. Mm -hmm. And that's just what works with our schedules. And I know neither of us are like huge snackers either. And so with that, if you do have a snack or two thrown in there, you can always just say you eat five larger meals and then break up that fifth meal into a snack, mm -hmm. into two snacks or something like that. Um, I know that's something I do often for my clients, especially if they have questions. Um, and that's one thing that has helped tremendously for them and everything like that. So, yeah. Um, so going into the next step is to eat those same meals for two to 21 days. Now that's a pretty big range there, two to 21 days, but it depends on the person and how they're navigating through this. If you are someone who's been tracking for a little bit and you're just having a hard time recently, you might only need like a little reset, so to speak, if we're going to call it that for a few days. If you're newer to macros, honestly, you might need it for 21, 28 days, a whole month of doing this. And I cannot reiterate enough. I've already said it three or four times. So this is temporary until you get a better handle on things. So tracking and eating those same meals will allow you to have two to 21 days that you know that you're consistently hitting your intake and goals. And I will say a little hack within my fitness pal, which it's funny that Alex didn't know that because he's probably the <laughs> one that's like been tracking macros macros longer than all of us is that if you are in my fitness pal and you eat the same meals when you go to the next day it can say like add yesterday's meal and you can add that or you can hit those dots in the corner and say copy from date and then go ahead and decide which meal from which date and add it over so you don't have to re-add everything if that's tedious for you so you can do that you don't have to like add each thing yeah. each and every day um, but that will give you that chunk of time where you're like I know that I'm hitting my macros because I planned it out that one day and I have it all set. And now I can consistently hit that for a few days. Um, and now next on that is once you feel confident that you can hit your numbers, this is where you can start being more flexible. So I would recommend just starting out switching one meal at a time so you don't have to sit and play Tetris all over again. So let's say that you have your four meals, you've been dividing them evenly, you're all good to go, you're really tired of your breakfast. Let's say it's eggs and an English muffin, and you really are just tired of eating that after X amount of days. Then go in and make a new meal that's going to be that 25 protein, that 50 carb, those 10 fats. Maybe that's some yogurt um, with some different things mixed in and some fruit. Um, maybe that's yogurt with that English muffin instead of eggs for the protein source. Maybe it's a um, like, scramble that you're making with potatoes all added in and mixed together. Maybe it's cream of rice and a protein shake. That's I know Mackenzie me. loves to have that for <laughs> breakfast. Um, and uh, or maybe it's pancakes that you're making yeah. um, and being able to have. So switch out that one meal so it's not this overwhelming thing that you're like, now I have to freaking restart this Tetris game and re-add everything together. Just start switching out that one meal. Now with you having having that meal that kind of swaps out almost perfectly for the meal you had before, you now have some rotating options that you know you can always fall back on. So let's say one morning you're all about the eggs and English muffin. You can go back to it because it's the same macros. Maybe the next morning you're all about the cream of rice and the protein shake. You can switch to that um, and not have stress about, oh my gosh, is this going to fit? because you already know it does. Right. And that's one thing that I will say is a lifesaver too, when you start to get a little bit, e like a little bit more comfortable with everything is that you always have something to fall back on. So you're no longer like in a, oh shit, like, what am I going to do? Um, and that's the biggest thing, the biggest game changer for me throughout 
my entire, like the past, I would say since 2020 was just now understanding I have these staple meals. I know I have these staple foods as well, and they all digest fairly well with me. So now it's just whatever I personally am craving at that moment. And even if it's the same meal, but it's the next day, say I switch up a seasoning or say I switch Mm -hmm. up a sauce, like those are the things that allow you to have food that tastes really good and is still hitting your goals. And I think a lot of people will undermine the um, strength of seasoning and just of condiments themselves is how much they do truly change a meal. And how to truly cook food. Um, That's something I've been talking about more and more recently is that I've realized a lot of people aren't enjoying their meals because they don't know how to cook. And so they're like choking down their food. And it was because I got busy and I messed up rice for the first time in like four years. (laughs) And I was eating it and I was like, oh my God, like I hate all of my meals horrible. right now. This yeah. tastes awful. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is when people say they don't know how to cook, how all of their meals taste. Mm-hmm. So I would highly encourage you taking some time to truly learn how to cook some basics. Not that you got to be freaking Gordon Ramsay in this bitch, but learn how to cook ground chicken or ground turkey yeah. or learn how to make rice or navigating through these things that uh, like learn how to put chicken in a crock pot. You don't really have to know how to make anything. You just got to put it in the crock pot, put salsa or chicken broth in there and leave it alone. It's going to be all good to go. But truly learning how to cook your food and season your food is going to be a total game changer for your enjoyment of food. Because I know Mackenzie and I both love our foods. Yeah. And it's not a saying like, oh my gosh, I love chicken so much. But no, I genuinely love the way my, the chicken tastes because we have a rule in our household, Brandon and I, that if you don't sneeze while you're seasoning it, you didn't season it enough. <laughs> and that is honestly the truth. And he'll say that he taught me how to season food and he's a liar, but that's beside <laughs> the point. Um, it's just one of those things that when you start to experiment and don't be afraid to experiment, I'm not saying you have to have a billion spices, but say you saw something cool at the grocery store and you're like, I wonder how that tastes. Like just grab it next time and just be like, hmm, maybe this might be good. And who knows, you might have a new favorite meal. Yeah. And with that, if you're afraid of ruining a big batch of food, what I do is that I don't season it when I cook it in bulk. Um, I season it as I'm making the meal. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, about some different things that we do for our foods and how to meal prep some different things and how to have that structure. But to finish the steps, so number one was to plan out your full day of eating um, and with a side note of being able to evenly divide your macros. Number two is to eat those meals for two to 21 days so you can consistently hit your goals and know what results you're gonna reap from consistently hitting your goals. Number three is once you're confident within those, you can start switching out one meal at a time. And then number four and five. Number four is to make sure you always have a plan. Um, I mean, you've heard the phrase before, failing to plan is planning to fail. And I cannot hammer that home enough. Mm -hmm. If you do not, back to my question, if there was a day that you actually planned out your food and didn't hit it, without like something traumatic happening within your day that would cause things to go off the rails, I mean, that's just, I mean common sense. I'm not talking about that. Um, But if you truly planned out your day and had a plan, was there a day that you didn't hit it? So always have a plan in place. Um, If you don't know what the day holds, plan what you can and make provisions for situations that come up and use them as a learning experience. Um, And then number five is track with ease because now you have a good base of how to navigate through that. So now we're going to go in some different things as far as um, a few more things within meal prep and then some final notes as far as track if you've kind of gone through this and now you're looking for um, a little bit different structure or a little bit more guidance as far as hitting those macros. So as far as making foods in bulk, um, I make a lot of our meats and our like just our proteins and our carbs in bulk because it is something with having a busy lifestyle. I If food isn't ready for me, I'm not eating it. Like I I just, I'm not, I'm either not going to eat or I'm going to grab something quick, which is either going to be a protein shake, a bar, or I'm going to stop at Chick-fil-A or Chipotle, whatever it may be. So 
I guarantee you're the same way as me. If food's not ready, you're not going to eat it. Um, so always having food ready. Um, and it's something that we can go through some different things possibly as far as different ways you can have things ready. Um, but really just taking a little bit of extra time um, of like today when I made lunch for Alex and I, I also got the rice started. And then after Alex, um, I finished Alex's meal in the pan because I needed the bigger pan to cook the meat. Um, I let my food cool off and I cooked um, two pounds of turkey and then two pounds of beef. And I let that cool off while I finished eating. And then I threw it all in the fridge and was good to go in the same time frame that I would have normally just made my own meal, sat and ate it. Maybe five extra minutes added to that. I was able to have now a ton of meals prepped because I have two pounds of beef, two pounds of turkey, and a ton of rice ready to go. Um, So definitely put getting those ready in bulk, and then you can season as you go. So within that, we also, and I know McKinsey's the same way, we have a base grocery list. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not something that we are constantly just getting all new things all the time. Now, we do like to try new things, which is why I'm about to branch off of this here in a second. Um, So we have the base grocery list. So let's say it's something like eggs, rice, sweet potatoes, beef, chicken, spinach, squash, uh, bananas, those kind of things, rice cakes. Yeah. Yeah. With that, I can make about like 20 different variations within those base foods that I know all sit well with me, which is kind of what Mackenzie was getting at as far as knowing what foods sit well and being able to rotate those through. So not, I can obviously with rice, I can make rice with chicken, rice with beef, rice with turkey. Those all obviously have different flavors to it. I can season it different. I can put different um, sauces on it. So that's already making a multitude of meals. I could also have a meal with sweet potatoes, which eat, which eat of, with each of those proteins. I could also have like some of the, because I know tortillas are something that we buy a lot. I mm-hmm. can make quesadilla with that, with any of those proteins. I could add sweet potatoes to the quesadilla. Um, I could add eggs to the quesadilla. I could navigate through this. So it's not just, oh, I can only have this meal as this meal is. It's I can navigate through all of these and make meals that are going to be enjoyable for me without getting so burnt out. So let's take the sweet potatoes, for example. I can make it in a breakfast scramble and have have them all diced up or have them shredded and be able to make a breakfast scramble with them. I could also um, cook them and put it in and make pancakes with sweet potatoes because those are very much so easily exchangeable with um, recipes that have bananas in them. So you could make a breakfast bread or a breakfast pancake with those sweet potatoes. And again, you're not wasting groceries. You have everything mm-hmm. base. If you weren't wanting sweet potatoes, the quote unquote normal way you would eat them. I could chop them up um, like fries and put them in the air fryer and have them with a burger or I could have them on the side of just chicken, whatever else it may be. I could dice them and put them in a taco and have that with black beans and chicken or my source of protein, whatever that may be. I could um, have it with a cinnamon. So take it away from some of the savory ones um, and have it with chicken and peanut butter and bananas. This might sound like a weird combination, but it's really good um, and make a completely different meal. Then I could turn around, season it with Lowry season salt, arguably one of the best seasonings um, and make it, like I said, with fries and a burger. So you can see there was just like six or seven different recipes or meals that I talked about with just sweet potatoes, using them in completely different ways for each and every recipe. Right. And I can tell you that Sue and I do not sit on Google and be like, what's a good recipe? It's more of like, okay, let's see what tastes good together today. And that's one thing that I get asked really often is like, do you have any ideas? And honestly, where my ideas come from are what sounds good to me at that very moment. Like, I love sweet I love sweet potatoes. I love ground beef. Okay, do I want shredded ground or do I want like ground beef or do I want a burger or do I want to have some chicken or do I want to have some steak? And those little things that you can just like think about like I'm craving. I know for a fact that Brandon and I usually have chicken and either steak and ground beef in the fridge that are always prepped. Um, We've also been having shrimp in there as well. So that's three separate proteins that we have. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I want chicken today and I want chicken for lunch and I want chicken for dinner. And other days I'm like, I don't want to see chicken. I want steak and ground beef. And that's the beauty of having these options. Now, if you don't have multiple people eating off of them, I always get the question like, how do I not waste the food? Mm -hmm. And at that point is when you're starting to plan it, 
your meals out for the week or for the day, that's when you're going to know how much of each you're going to be eating that day. So you then that kind of prevents you to not throw away your food. I'm also someone that doesn't do single prepped meals. Mm-hmm. I just am not a fan because I don't know how I'm going to feel on Friday if yeah. I prep it on Monday. And so I, that's why I think the beauty of, of being in bulk, and I used to work a nine to five, I know the, the struggle of, you know, putting your meals together in the morning before you go to work. But for me, it was so worth that extra 10 minutes because then I was able to have what I truly wanted. And that's the key of staying and progressing is really enjoying your food. And if you take that extra time to put into it of you take the time to get ready, you take the time to, you know, get your clothes all nice. And it's the same as your food of just like, okay, I'm going to take 10 or five minutes in my morning routine and have a meal that I truly enjoy. People at work are going to start asking you what how you do it. And people at work are going to be like, oh, you can do that and still, you know, look, usually it's you can do that and look that way or you can eat that. I didn't know you could. And no food is off limits. Like yeah. that's the thing is so... And like Mackenzie talking about of one day she might want chicken, the next she might want steak. That's what flexible dieting is. It isn't let me fit as much junk as possible into my food. It's how can I still go with the flow for based on what I'm craving um, and what I want within that moment. Um, And I'll also say as far as working a job and taking the meals to it before I worked at home, because I think a lot of people just look at us as coaches and Mm -hmm. think, well, you have it easier because you are working at home. I won't sidestep the fact that I do have have access to a kitchen throughout the day most of the time, but I'm also extremely busy. It's not like I can just chill in the kitchen all day long. And there are times that I still have to prep my meals for the whole day in the morning because I do not have time to go to the kitchen. So I get it. I've also worked a crazy hectic schedule. I worked from having 21 credit hours, working a job and prepping for a competition and not being able to go home from 5 a.m. until past 8 p.m. I've been there. I've navigated through it. And I will agree with Mackenzie that it's so much better when you know you're looking forward to your meals, when you're excited for your meals. Um, And you're able to, like Mackenzie was talking about laying out your clothes. When it comes to food, I... I personally, and this might come across harsh, I hate that people don't care about food. I hate that people don't take the extra time. I hate when people complain about how hard it is with food. I get it. I've been there. I've suffered through not only the time of prepping everything and still suffer through all of that, um, but I've also suffered through feeling like crap. 90% 90% of my life. Uh, well, not 90% of my life now. I've right. That was back when I started. But um, for 20 plus years of my life, I navigated at feeling less than my best, not understanding my body and just feeling like crap. Um, and there's people who go their whole entire lives feeling that way. And I might get pretty passionate about this, but it's because the top five leading causes of death all have some sort of diet related aspect to them. Mm -hmm. Again, the top five leading causes of death, the thing that we don't want to do, die, all have a diet-related aspect. And when you stop caring about food, when you start thinking, oh, this is so hard, this is going to take time out of my day, it's going to take time out of your life. Yeah, It's going to take time out of your freaking lifetime if you don't spend 10 extra minutes on it. And not to say you have to track every macro and have to weigh everything. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying you have to care yeah. a little bit to give a little bit of effort to it and yeah. to be able to feel good and yeah. have a life worth living. Right. You get one body in this lifetime. So like, the moment that you start to feel well and the moment that you start to to perform at your best, I guarantee you that you look at it and you're like, wow, I did not know I could feel like this. And for example, this morning, like I had a check. I have a client who has an immune, immunocompromise, immune, 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 I don't she is know. immunocompromised. Yeah, <laughs> immunocompromised. She has a deficiency. And she put in her check-in this morning. We started working together in January that she has not been sick since December of 2020. Has come off of five of her medications. And it's not because of anything I've done. It's because of her effort in making sure that she makes her nutrition a priority and making sure that she makes her internal feeling and how she performs on a day-to-day basis 
her priority. And that to me, like it gives me chills. It gave me chills reading it this morning. It gives me chills now talking about it. But just to see somebody reach that freedom that I know that I reached, you know, just recently, really in 2020, it like is the most rewarding thing ever. And I would take that over any X amount of pounds lost in however many weeks that you want. If you feel internally well, and that's the point of nutrition and the, the um, I guess, so to speak, the privilege of nutrition Mm -hmm. is to feel well. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And I wish that I could just project this to everybody. And I want everyone to feel well, but you have to want it for yourself as well. Yeah. And um, we didn't necessarily intend to get off on this tangent, but I think it's (laughs) beneficial because when talking about macros, the reason the true root reason it's easy for Mackenzie and I is we know what it feels like to feel like absolute shit. And we don't want to go back. I'm good. We do not want to go back at all. (laughs) Even this morning, I was talking to Alex because I was looking at my labs and kind of going through them and um, like my blood labs, um, getting those all set. And I said something about in college, I had severe depression. Like I did not get out of bed for many, many days. And I've had times recently where I've wrestled with why it was so bad during that time frame. Now, obviously, my life is a complete 180 from what my life was in college, um, the the way that I lived my life. But a lot of that has to do with starting to give a shit about myself. Um, at that time, I was excessively drinking. I didn't give a crap about my mental health. I did not try to be better. I was not paying attention to what I was eating. I actually had a colonoscopy when I was either a senior in high school or a freshman in college as a 17, 18 year old. Tell me how many 17 or 18 year olds you think have had a colonoscopy. Not much. Normally you don't get them till you're 50 for the first time. I actually went in with my mom for her (laughs) 50th one. I was like, hey, we're going in together. Um, But I was talking to him about it and I was just like, I think that while there obviously was something going on mentally that I definitely did have depression, a lot of it was because I wasn't taking care of myself and I was excessively drinking and I wasn't fueling myself. And to see how my depression is now versus then honestly makes me want to cry because I felt so lost in that moment and I just didn't even feel like it was worth getting out of bed And so much of that could have been avoided if I cared about myself and if I cared about fueling myself and learning about my body instead of just saying it's too hard or it's too difficult or it's going to take too much time because you might not have that time in the end. Um, And that's extremely important to mention because it's not just about macros and looking a certain way for Mackenzie and I and for probably a multitude of you guys listening. It's about how we can feel our best and keep that feeling because we know what it feels like to not feel that way. Right. And, and to touch on that too, it's like to go on to another tip is that you don't have to be perfect. And I can tell you that there are times when I'm perfect and there are times when I'm not. And that's, I see so often that people are like, I need to hit triple zeros. Like, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Like you really don't. And it's, if you look at your MyFitnessPal and you're one, one to two grams off every other day or whatever, like that is damn near perfection. And that is going to get you where you need to go. And I think the, the idea of having to have a triple zero or to be perfect within macros is very, very one of the largest flaws because people so often will get discouraged and then it just derails from there. And I will go blue in the face of saying consistency will trump perfection every single time. So when you're focusing on macros, you do not have to be perfect. Um, There are ranges, but I honestly, like I will tell my clients be as, as close as possible. I would say, you know, eight to 10 grams for protein and carbs. You can be pretty much that's a good range. And then three to five grams for fats. Like that is the ranges that I would presume like pretty good um, in terms of consistency there. And you're going to see results when you do that. Yes, exactly. Consistency is very much so needed for flexibility, for results, for everything. Um, And within that, I mean, the, the basics and what I will always give as tips to people when it comes down to it is if you can focus on five things, and that is getting some sort of movement in every day, whether that is going for a walk with your dog, I promise you it still counts. It doesn't need to be some intense hit circuit. I don't remember the last time I did a hit circuit 
or anything like that. Not to say that they're bad, but just saying that you don't have to. Like it's possible right. to do it without it. Getting some sort of movement in, drinking water throughout your day, getting some water in. Now, I know not everyone's going to get in a gallon, but being proactive about drinking water is going to be very helpful. Eating foods that make you feel good. Sometimes you got to eat foods that make you feel good in the soul, but also really paying attention to foods that make you feel good on a daily basis, that you truly have the best energy that you have possible, the best digestion, you're able to be as present as possible, all that jazz. Um, Number four is going to be focusing on getting 1% better each and every day. And number five is going to be um, just taking something that's going to be managing your stress in each day. Mm -hmm. So if you do those things, things of getting movement in, drinking water, paying attention to what makes you feel good with food, focus on stress management, that's going to take you a whole hell of a lot further than stressing yourself out about getting perfect zeros or triple zeros or whatever it may be. Um, If you focus on those things, I can promise you, you will see the changes that you want to see. And you'll see a positive shift in your all over life. Yeah. And I always say, you'll hear me say, check your boxes. Like, make your boxes. And I honestly, for a while would write them on like a little calendar. Mm -hmm. And every day I would check them because seeing that of like, it's like a to do list. Oh, I checked my box today. Like I did, I did my non negotiable. And it's okay to be selfish in these moments. There's going to be times when people question you, there's going to be people that don't understand. And that's okay. That is everything in life. And that is everything literally anything that you ever choose to do, there's going to be somebody that's like, why are you doing that? And at the end of the day, the most important thing is that it matters to you and it's important to you. And that's what's going to carry you through that. And either using it as a, a way to educate that person that's questioning you or just saying, I appreciate your concern, but this is what I want to do. And this is what makes me happy. If you support me, great. If not, okay, that's fine too. Um, so at the end of the day, being selfish and tracking your macros and, and don't let people make you feel bad for doing that. You can still enjoy your life, but there's going to come a time when you want to feel good in your body and your digestion and because you're paying attention to what you're putting into your body, into your mind and into your soul, that is, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. And Mackenzie and I still to this day, even after tracking all this time, have even our own family members say, when are you going to eat normal? And within normal, it's normal not to care about these things. So it's normal to feel bad or to operate at a lower frequency. So stand firm in what makes you feel good. Um, And if that's eating a certain way, then freaking do it and don't give a crap about what someone else is thinking. So again, we didn't mean to go off onto that (laughs) tangent, but I think it was good. I think it was some good shit. <laughs> so the last few notes here as far as making sure that you can hit your macros consistently and with ease, um, pre-track. I'm plan. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Um, divide by meal. So just the number of meals you eat, divide each macro and hit that per meal. I also recommend that for water for people. So it's not like, oh, I'm trying to hit this huge amount by the end of the day. Um, it's something that you are like, okay, by noon, I'm going to try to hit this amount. By two, I'm going to try to hit this amount. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, And then also having single single macro go-tos. So this is something, um, and um, I don't think I have a video on it. Never mind. Um, I will link a video below talking about how to track individual macros. Um, So if you are going out to eat and you're trying to navigate through it and you can't find it and you're trying to figure it out, I'll have that linked in the show notes. Um, But as far as the single macro go-tos, having something that's strictly each macro. So if you do get to the end of the day and you're off by something, you can always have that to fall back on. So for example, for protein, mine would be something like a fat-free yogurt, a protein powder, or egg whites. Those are things that are mostly protein, if not all protein. So if at the end of the day, I've hit all of my macros, but protein, I can go to those. And I always pick options like that. The reason I don't have something like turkey or chicken is something that I would eat by itself. Um, So I would just drink a protein shake or just eat yogurt by itself um, or something like that. For fats, it's normally I say oils, but that might not be something that you're going to just take a spoonful of oil and put it down your throat. I mean, I 
I wouldn't personally do that, <laughs> but it is good to have that. If you're like at your last meal and you're like, I need only oils or only fats, you can have oils in place of that. Mm -hmm. um, but some good options that are going to be mostly just fat are going to be nuts, although they are going to have some protein and some carbs in them, um, as well as being able to have uh, avocado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avocado is a great one. Um, there's a few other that I'm kind of slipping through my head right now, but with like chia seeds and flax seeds. Yeah. yeah. They're all going to have some sort of trace protein in them. Um, but it is nice to have like just knowing physically just the knowledge in your brain too is just knowing like, oh, I can grab that and it's mainly a fat source. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were talking about with the experience as you continue to track macros, as you continue to come across foods that you enjoy, that's the type of knowledge you're going to garnish. So Yeah. And then for carbs, mine are normally fruit or rice cakes because yeah. again, super easy to add on to any meal. Now, of course, it's always the option of adding more rice to your meal or increasing the carbs that are already in the meal. But again, let's say that you've kind of made a mistake steak throughout the day or you had a meal switched in or out um, and now you have carbs left, uh, grabbing a rice cake um, or grabbing some fruit is going to be super easy. And those are like 90 yeah. to 99 percent carbs. Yeah. Like um, cereal crackers, yeah. like those types of things. Those are the carbs are the easiest. easiest. It's when you <laughs> come down to like protein and you come down to fats, you're like, uh, I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also, if you're not wanting to just track the same exact meals every day, having an outline or skeleton to your day or bookends to your day. So let's say you know you're going out to eat or you know you want to have a certain dessert at home, pre-track just that and then like two or three other things so you can fill in the gaps. And this comes mm -hmm. with once you get a little bit more experience. And this is honestly how I track throughout the day is I have a three or I have two meals um, that I eat every single single day. Like I just love them. I haven't gotten tired of them in months and months and months. I eat those same two meals every day. So I always pre-track those two meals. And then my other two meals kind of, um, just swing depending on what I'm feeling. Like Mackenzie was talking about, if I'm feeling this, I want to go for it. Yeah. Whereas the other day I was like, I'm feeling like a burger, but I had already cooked all of my ground beef. So I made a patty melt. Um, but it was something that I was craving it in that moment. I was able to make it be flexible and navigate through that all around. So do yeah. you have any other last notes or tips, tricks, hacks? And just, just learn to be flexible and learn to be uncomfortable and just take the time. Like that's what it is, is when you, at the end of the day, you make time for your priorities and it's no different than your nutrition. So you make time to go to work on time and all of those things, make your nutrition a priority. And then it becomes second nature for you to be like, oh no, I need to, you know, I need to make my meals. It makes me feel good. And that's kind of the point that Sue and I are at is like, it, not, it then becomes a no brainer and it's just part of you. And that's with literally anything in life that you do. The more that you do it, the more it becomes part of you. So it's going to be frustrating. You're not going to be perfect all the time, but just remember that consistency will win every single time. And it's the effort that you put towards it. That's going to make you successful. Yeah. And if you can't get every single meal pre-tracked and pre-made or you can't make every single meal by yourself, just taking those steps to be 1% better, to make a better decision when you're going out to eat, to try and navigate through that. Um, because like I said at the beginning, I don't expect people to listen to this and be at the level that Mackenzie and I are at. Um, it's something that's taken years and years of learning and applying and failing and learning again um, and going through that. And we made lots of mistakes. I, making my food before going somewhere was not second nature before, <laughs> no. but it now just is like, oh, I'm just gonna uh, always have time in my day to make sure I have this meal to be able to be successful and navigate through this. And once you have that knowledge, it makes it so much easier to go through the day and know what choices you can make, even if you are going completely on the fly. Yep. And, and you got this. Just yeah. believe in yourself. That's all it takes is just a little bit of belief. And um, care. Yeah. And, and you'll be good to go. Well, sweet. Hopefully you learned how to track your macros with ease. We'd love if you tagged either of us. Yeah. Uh, if Let you learned us know. something, some tips or anything um, that was helpful for you um, and being able to be successful within all of this. So thanks again for listening to another episode of the podcast. I hope you guys have been enjoying the muscle series um, and being able to go through all of those. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, definitely go back and check them <laughs> out. Learn about each muscle group, learn about um, the our favorite exercises for it, common mistakes people people learn, um, have the anatomy of it, learning about all of that to allow you to be better in the gym and better in the kitchen.
Oh, yeah. (laughs) Catch you guys on the next one.